So if you, you now know how what succession ceremony is all about and how beneficial it is for a cutting gardener, um, especially if you've got a small patch so that you can add variety and extend your season. If you have the ability to sow seeds inside, whether it's on a windowsill, in a polytunnel, uh, in a greenhouse, there's so many options that you could use to sow your seeds inside and get them started sooner. So if you've got that ability, stay tuned and I will show you how to plan your succession sowing for the season without direct sowing. So in the previous video, I showed you the plan for direct sowing your three meter square cutting patch. Um, but in this one, we're gonna assume that you can get some of your seeds started early in some sort of frost-free environment, whether it's a windowsill, a greenhouse, or any other form of structure that gives light and not necessarily warmth, but certainly free from frost so that you can get started earlier. So let's get going on this. So in this particular case, because we're not direct sowing, we're able to plant, get going earlier. So in the direct sowing, in the direct sowing plan, we weren't starting sowing until May because we had no way of keeping them frost free. Because we now have that facility, then we could start 1st of April or even sooner, depending on when your last frost date is. And um, for me, it's mid-May, um, so I kind of get things going 1st of April at the latest. I do sow some things earlier because they happen to have longer germination times, but it depends on the plant itself what needs to sow in. So just to keep things simple, you start 1st of April is your first batch sowing. So again, we're doing monthly sowings because the same principles apply. You don't need many plants to create a 30 stem vase on a weekly basis. So it's six varieties of which you only need one plant of each for each week. And therefore, if you allow five plants per variety, then that will give you ample blooms once the season gets going. So in this particular first batch, I am adding in a different set of seeds to what I did in the direct sowing. So I've got snapdragons, scabiosas, china asters, cornflowers, dorcas and amimagus. Um, amimagus is in the other one because I just find it such a useful flower. Um, but some of those, particularly the china aster and the snapdragons, take a long time to germinate and grow and get ready to go out. So starting those off as early as possible is key. If you're direct sowing, so not sowing them until May, the chances of them flowering is really quite late into the season. So you could be looking at August before you get your first flower. And that's taken up vital space in that small bed that could be used by something else that would give you blooms. So I would only recommend doing the snapdragons, the sowing of the snapdragons in April. I wouldn't direct sow them. But I would, in your second year, direct sow them um, in the autumn, but we'll come to that later. So the first batch is for the long germination plants. And it's also about, I'll pot up my dahlias. So 1st of April, I'm sowing my first set of um, flowers and potting up my dahlias. Four weeks later, or however long we want April to be, so on the 1st of May, I'm sowing my second batch. So this is still frost free, so it's I'm not even going into the bed yet. So it's just getting prepared. So in this one, I have a different set of flowers. Um, other than the Amimagus, I could have picked something else in there as a as a filler, no foliage plant. 
Um, but I kind of like Ami. It's such a useful plant to add air into an arrangement. So I would always go with that. Um, and in, if anything, I would maybe change it in the flower in the flower list A to something else. But it's up to you which flowers you plant. But I this gives us a little bit more variety than the direct sown variety. So the first list has got a different set of flowers to the second list. But then we will continue with list B going forward. So let's go into the plan. So on the 14th of May, so we've now had three sessions. This is the third session that we needed to get involved with our cutting patch. So the first session was 1st of April. The second session was the 1st of May. Now it's the 14th of May. So it's, for me, the last frost date. So I can start doing things outside. So the flowers that I sowed in 1st of April, so batch one, can now get sown out. They should be little seedlings and I can sow them out. Again, I can take into account the direction of the sun and whether um, some of them are going to grow larger for the spacings, but we can set them out so that um, they're appropriately spaced for those particular plant varieties. Now remember, with cutting flowers, you can so you can grow them closer together than you would if they were going into a garden. So don't be afraid to plant things closer um, because you can then, then get more in the space. But I say 14th of May, we're now planting out. And this is from the first batch. We can also plant out the dahlias that we potted up on the 1st of April. They should have sprouted. We're now past the risk of frost so they can go into the ground outside. So that's our jobs to do mid-May. The next time we have any jobs to do is the 1st of June. So we have got the batch one already in there. Now we may, and it's only May, we may have some flowering because they started in the 1st of April. So it may be that some of the varieties that you've chosen are quite quick to flower. So some of those may be in flower. Um, they may not, but they will be getting on, well on their way. If this was direct sown, you would not be anywhere near this. So you would have direct sown maybe the 1st of May. So you would be nowhere near getting into a flowering position. So by sowing in the greenhouse prior to the frost date, the last frost date, gives you the option of potentially getting flowers sooner in week eight. First of June, so the jobs for the first of June is we are planting out our second batch of sown seeds. So these are already seedlings, so they're plants, they're not seeds, that will get planted outside. In addition, we are planting another set, another batch of flowerless bee. So we're gonna have the next set up and coming. Now they can be sown in the greenhouse, they can be sown outside in trays, but we're not sowing them in the bed. We're keeping them to the side to grow in their own under their own steam and leaving the bed active with just the seeds that are already growing out. Mid-June, dahlias are sprouting, but you know we're nowhere near flowers in dahlias. We should have absolutely flowers in flower list A. So your first batch from um, the 1st of April. Your batch from the 1st of May may have some flowers, but they're probably still just growing. But at this point, mid-June, you're starting to sow biennials. So this is planning for next year. Um, the biennials are plants that get sown one year and flower the same time next year. So I would be expecting these seeds to be flowering mid-June next year. So again, you're planting these away from the beds but ready to plant out later in the season. 1st of July, again, the dahlias, nothing, they're just growing. Um, first batch, flowering. Second batch, we may start to be getting flowers in those second batch again as well. It does depend 
on the flower varieties, as I say, but we are looking first in July. We should be getting something on some varieties of that second batch. So we are also, in the 1st of July, planting the third batch of flowers that we sowed in the 1st of June. So they're coming out now. So again, they're seedlings, not yet flowers. Now you can plant them out quite close together at this point because the flowers that were sown in April, that first batch, will be coming out soon because they'll have spent, you'll have spent most of those flowers. You can get rid of the flowers as and when they're finished, plant by plant, or leave it until all of them are completed, up to you. But they will be the first, that pink, full pink set, will be the first to go. But you're planting out that third batch of flowers that we did. And we are sowing a fourth patch, batch of flowers of flowerless bee, or in other varieties, whatever you want to be doing. Um, so we can do that. So 1st of July is getting, is really planting out what we've already got and sowing the next set. Mid-July, we are getting to the end of that first batch. Everything in the second batch should be flowering. Third batch is still growing. And that's pretty much it. So you, you, you've got garden, that you've got flowers that you can pick. So July, you should have something that you can be creating um, floral arrangements with throughout July. First of August, you may well have some flowers in day and the dahlias. That will depend on the weather, really. And as is the case with a lot of these, if you've got a good summer, all of these can be flowering much sooner and for longer. If you've got a bad summer of cold and wet, then it will take longer to, to get all of these flowering. So dahlias may be flowering the 1st of August. At this point, you've removed the first batch, so they should be spent by now. So this patch here is your second batch, so the 1st of May flowers are now fully in flower for you to pick from. Your third batch, so the ones planted 1st of June, should be starting to flower as well. So if you've got different varieties in there, you can bring those in. And you should be able to plant out your fourth batch. So this would be your 1st of July sowings that are going out now. So again, there should be sufficient plants in there to see you um, through creating, picking 37 vases for August. Um, so that's your May batch, June batch, July batch, fully damied in flower pr probably by mid-August. Um, so now we come to 1st of September, absolutely all of your dahlias will be in flower 1st of September, no doubt about that. Um, you may find some of these flowers, such as zinnia, they are quite late on in the season, so you may find that they're flowering and others weren't, but it it kind of depends on the weather, as I say. They, they're definitely like the sun zinnias, so starting them too early is just, there's no point. They won't do anything until it gets some sun. So 1st of September, we've got the dahlias. We have got, now I'm losing track of which batch we've got in here now. Is this still June? 1st of June's batch? Um, no, I think it's 1st of May, 1st of June, 1st of July. We didn't plant out anything in August because of, depending on the frost dates as to whether you do anything but at this point 1st of September I would be starting to think about sowing hardy annuals and again this is planning for next year it's not going to do anything now you are not going to get flowers for them but this is where you could be starting to plant out the flowers that were in your flowerless day so the long germinating ones and um, so snapdragons are perfect for sowing out in the autumn and it gives them long longer to um, get going they are hardy so they will withstand a winter and they will be ready to flower earlier than spring sowing them so they will get you going pretty quickly if you do them now so 
This is just hardy annuals though. Nothing more, no half hardy or anything like that. They will die with the frost. But hardy annuals will withstand an autumn sowing as long as you plant them or sow them early enough so they can get established before the cold weather arrives. So start those in trays so that you're getting them started. And then mid-September, you're moving that second batch. Dahlias would still be going unless you've had a frost. And that third batch is now in full flower. Fourth batch is also in flower. So you've got a good a lot of flowers that are ready to go in September based on when your season, when your frost dates are, but where we are generally, you're fine in September. And now you can start, as you've got rid of that second batch, there's space for you to start planting out those biennials that you sowed mid-June and the hardy annuals that, so, that you sowed two weeks ago. So they should be germinated and potentially ready to go out. You could leave them a little bit later if they're not quite got their um, true leaves but you're thinking about getting them sown or planted out and then really it is all dependent on the frost so you may need to remove all of your flowering plants by this point because you've had a cold snap um, and equally your dahlias may need to be transplanted or it may be you may be having an Indian summer and things are still warm and still flowering who knows um, but come the 1st of November, that's when your big job is again. So by the 1st of November, I would take it, my job for the 1st of November is to lift up the dahlias and put them somewhere to dry out initially before packaging them up and keeping them, overwintering them, and then removing any remaining flowers. And at this point, you can then add extra compost in for the season so you're getting the nutrition in ready for next year so you're preparing the bed again for the following season to come. You can also plant out spring bulbs at this point. Now in a cutting patch your spring bulbs are lifted come once they're finished blooming so you've got that space they're not left in there to continue to bloom year after year and um, particularly tulips because they tend to not be as good the next year but if it's just for you does it matter if they're slightly shorter so I uh, I, I sometimes um, plant them up once they're done I will save the bulbs keeping the leaves on and let them die back in a pot so that I can plant them again in the autumn until they get so fed up <laughs> short that they're not really any use for cuttings at all and um, that would be different if you were a commercial grower you wouldn't do that you would get rid of the whole bulb tulips are an annual an annual bulb in, in if you were commercially growing them but this is a home garden so we can do that so tulips equally can be planted really close together if you're using them for cuttings because you would then take them out at the end of the year or once they're flowered so you don't need to worry too much so over winter this is what you've got you've got your hardy annuals that are settling in for winter you've got biennials that are settling in for winter they're not going to flower until probably june next year tulips are planted in you may add in some extra corms for like anemones or ranunculus if you wanted to but you've got to make sure that things will be finished ready for your plantings next May. So this is just ready for November and then come May next year you've got blooms, you've got your tulips in flower, you may or may not have the biennials or the hardy annuals in flower, it depends what they are. Um, you may, you know, if you've got some sweet peas growing in there you may have them flowering. Um, later in May. Biennials are probably going to be flowering in June but if you think back to where we were at the beginning of May last year there was nothing that you had last year, the season that we've just had and um, there was nothing in flower so come the second year you have the scope once you've decided that you're doing this you have the scope of having the flowers in that gap in mid-May 
to June time by having pre-planted hardy, some hardy annuals and biennials and the tulips will have covered you through a bit of spring. So same concept as the direct sowing, it just means for this that you've got a little bit more, a longer season because things are flowering earlier. So now I've covered both types of seed sowing that you can do or, or the planning thereof, so direct sowing or if you can plant some out um, separate to the bed. So now you just need to get sowing, um, get those seed catalogues out, buy your seeds and get planting. There will be some videos coming through. I will be the no dig bed that I created in an earlier video. I will be sowing out according to this plan that I've just covered. Um, and I will show you a video. I, as the season progresses, I'll show you what's in flower in this particular growing season. Um, and you can see how effective it's been. Mm -hmm.